Good evening and welcome back to the shop. I've got a special treat for you tonight. I've been working on my top four best jigs by special request, the all time top four best jigs that I use all the time in the shop. They're super effective for getting accurate work done repeatedly, but the best part is they're cheap and they're easy to make yourself. So let's get started. And you know what we're gonna have to do? Head over to the table saw. All right, here we are at the table saw. Nice of you to join me. Now these are in no particular order, but this one ranks really up there. It might be one or two. Uh, and this is the tenoning jig. A lot of you have seen this. It's a super simple, really the best jigs are the simplest jigs that perform the elegant, efficient, accurate work we want them to. The way this one works, it's really dirt simple. It's a box that you build to go over your fence on your table saw. Now, most higher end or mid to higher end table saws have this type of uh, beam fence. They're quite consistent in width right across the, from the length. So you can fit a box right over in such a way that it slides with zero play. It's just a perfect fit on there. What's great about this is that your fence, your, your tenoning jig is on the fence and you can adjust the fence so quickly and easily. Unlike those old metal ones, you know, that ride in the slot and you have to crank the handle and readjust and move it. This is already built in to your sled. So it's a simple box. Now it consists of the box that's built around the sled with a backer block. The backer block simply does what it says. It backs up the cut. So you're going to set your tenon, your material to be tenoned against the block. The fence is holding it at a true 90 and then we'll run it across. I do want to get a square. It's always good to double check that. And I want you to see that it is good. So let's fit it over the fence. And by the way, I'm not showing in depth making each one of these jigs because we already did that. We have a video on the Shop Night Live. We've done building this jig in depth and it's condensed as much as we could and it's free. So we put the link to that video. If you want to build one of these tenoning jigs, head on over there. I know a lot of you already have. So chat in if you like it. I'd also like to hear what are your top jigs if you think this is worth building or whatever. All right, so this, this fence is about seven inches high and I built this one out of Baltic birch. So you have a nice, solid, true, consistent fence. Now check this out. I'm gonna set up my square and let's just, with it on the fence, you can see, you can see how that just hits beautifully square. And so it's ready to adjust to where we, wherever we want to make our tenon. Now I already have a slot here. I'm gonna be using for a course, I'm teaching right after this. So I'm gonna line it up with that slot just so I don't cut a bunch. But the thing is, these, this is just a piece of backer material that you can replace because it's nice to have a clean uh, back here so that when you cut your piece, you don't get a lot of tear out at the top of it. So check this out. This is what it actually looks like behind that backer piece. It's all sawn out from <laughs> a lot of cuts. So it's had a good life. Yeah. And you can see, I also have some shim material in here because this is actually this, this tenoning jig was fit to my old Powermatic saw. And by shimming it, I was able to repurpose it onto this saw stop. But you probably won't need those shims if you're building a new one around your existing fence. All right, so let's just take it for a test drive. I'll show you how it works. Now, one of the other cool additions to this jig is the spacer block technology. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want a 3 8 inch tenon, say, you 
Rather than moving the fence after running all your pieces for one side of the tenon, you can actually just use a spacer block so that you can set it to come up and cut one side of the tenon, one cheek side, then remove it and your piece will slide over whatever the thickness of the spacer block is. So when you cut that other cheek, you want, you're cutting from the other side of the blade now, we'll be referencing the outside surface. So if I want a 3 8 inch thick tenon, I want my tenon spacer to be 3 8 plus the saw curve because I've got to go on the other side of the blade, which is usually an eighth of an inch. So this tenon spacer is about a half inch thick. But you know what? When you make it, it doesn't always get perfect. You might have a particular uh, kerf width to your saw blade. So that's where the micro shims come in. The very expensive micro shims, which <laughs> you used to be able to get for 99 cents at Walmart. <laughs> but, but now it's with inflation, it's up to $1.29 for this white uh, masking tape. Um, so <laughs> you can just use that. That's a micro shim. It's four thousandths of an inch thick. Or you can use like the green tape is six thousandths of an inch. But you'll just add tape to your spacer block like I did to make it thicker if the tenon's too loose. And you can remove it or sand your, your spacer block if your tenon's too thick. Let's just make it a run with it and we'll go for it. Yes, you heard him right. Masking tape. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. One with. Okay, now I'm usually cutting seven eighths long tenons when for chairs and rails in general, table rails, but I don't raise the blade all the way to the seven eighths when cutting these cheeks. So we've got it a little less than seven eighths. Then I would just drop the blade, set the stop to seven eighths and make my shoulder cuts. But right now I just wanted to show you the genius of this jig <laughs> and the tenon spacer. So I'm going to just cut these off quickly with the bandsaw just to test the fit. So the bandsaw is right here. And here's a, a sample mortise I just made earlier using the 3 8 inch hollow chisel mortiser. Now this should be a little snug, which I'd prefer. Oh, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? So you see how quick and easy that was to just set up and cut accurately and quickly with our tenoning jig. What I like about it is how fast you adjust it with the fence. But the other great thing, this tenoning jig doubles as a high fence for other situations where you're using it for raised panels. You, I've shown that when cutting raised panels, you just remove the block. I've just got a couple screws in over here, move the block and you cut your raised panels. All right, well, let me show you the next jig. I'll set this aside. And the other one, the next one we also have a great, really extensive video on building. And that is the all important cross cut sled. I'm just going to show you this one quick because we've seen this a lot, I think. Um, but this, we crank it up. We've got a flat base. This is, I make mine out of MDF because I like how flat it stays. It's only a half inch thick because I don't want to lose too much of the height of my saw blade to get the full depth. And then there's this back rail fence, which I've laminated M uh, Baltic birch up to make this. I've actually got three layers of half inch Baltic birch to make this fence. So it's really true and strong and staying straight. And then there's just a back fence here that holds it together 
because you're basically sawing this in half. So the fence needs to be high enough that you don't saw through it. And the guide way rails are running in the slots nice and true. So once again, you have this sense of zero play and we're getting a nice crosscut. Now we've got a great video on building this crosscut sled uh, and a second video we made called the three cut method that is all about squaring it dead accurate, dead nuts as we like to say, and <laughs> with a dirt simple method. So check that out if you have frustrations with squaring up your sled as I had for years, this method will alleviate those. And I've gotten so many comments and nice thank yous from people who built the sled and no longer have that frustration. And man, I know what that's like. So you can have this beautiful sled. And the cool thing is you can build them a lot of different sizes. And again, it's not that expensive to build. Let me just show you a quick cross cut. I'll just use something small here. So I'm just going to set up. I could set a stop here. And I, for stops, I usually just clamp a block here to the fence to make my cross cut. But I'm just going to hold this one. Let's check the square. Oh, it's marvelous. <laughs> it's dead. <laughs> you know. All right, so there it is. The cross cut sled. That is the all important, really the backbone of a lot of fine work. I do most of my accurate angle cutting and squaring ends of pieces right here on the cross cut sled. I like my chop saw, but it's just not quite as dialed in for that finer work. I know some people who have really set up their chop saw to be extremely reliable and I admire you. <laughs> I've had mine at times, but I just find it a lot more difficult to get consistently accurate, predict predictable results with the chop saw versus a sliding cross cut sled. All right, so I'm gonna take this off. I do wanna just quickly show you, you can build those any size you like. Check this out. This is a, a little short version. The magician back there with that. Yeah. <laughs> my Supplies. my illusion just fell to the, the ground. Yeah, so this one I have set up uh, actually for the, the round chair class that we're gonna, we're gonna be using this in a week or two, um, using it for cutting dados. So you can have specialized ones. It's shorter. So it's just for obviously cutting narrower pieces, but I didn't wanna cut a big, gouge or a big dado in my main sled. Uh, once you do that, you could put a sacrificial base, but I'm trying to preserve that one. So nice to have a few sleds around. Speaking of sleds, the miter sled right here at the table saw. Again, to get really precise, accurate miters, it's nice to have a sled like this where you have that zero play and you can get right up here and you can align the workpiece where you want your cut, right with that beautiful, fresh cut edge from, and have like a zero clearance. Many times I've added pieces to my fence and just layered it out if I wanted to create a new zero clearance and just tacked it to the existing one and made a cut. Let's go ahead and make a couple cuts here. Now, the beautiful thing about this miter sled is that you don't have to have the miter exactly 45 degrees. It, of course you're shooting for that, right? But you don't have to, as long as the complementary miter you cut is going to match it to make 90. Okay, so I might have 44 and a half on this side, 45 and a half on this side, and that's gonna come together and make a perfect 90 every time. The way you want to make this sled, and we go into this, this video is also linked, the miter sled, is to add this second panel on top of the base of the sled, 
in, when this is added, this corner just simply has to be dead 90. And that's what it is. It's 90 degrees with a 45 kind of back here. So once that 90 is set there, if I cut one piece here, let me just make a line on top of here. This will be my face and this will be my face. So I'll make one cut in this direction and then one cut from the other side. I know that when those two come together, I'll have to have 90. Let's go ahead and make a cut and see what happens. All right, so let's bring those up. Look at that, it's a beautiful thing. So <laughs> these two come right up. We saw them there at 90. That's it, a beautiful 90 degree miter. Um, I could put my square on that. This is just gonna be hard to see. So I can just say it's perfect, no matter what it is. Ah, oh, it's perfect. <laughs> I can't see it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. But right off the table saw like that, you're going to have some saw marks and some imperfections in the joint. Now, sometimes that's okay. You're not doing something that's so crisp and prime. But other times you want to be sure that surface is impeccable if you want to get a beautiful, seamless look to your miters. And for that, I'm going to direct you to my fourth top best jig and that I want to show you back at the bench the last jig my top four jigs top four best jigs and that is the shooting board and this shooting board right now is set up for a 45 so once again we've got a 45 over here and a 45 over here we can shoot as long as this is 90 degrees, it doesn't matter if this is slightly off in that way it's leaning against the fence. Those two, if I shoot one on one side and one on the other, will combine to be 90. But I know they are really on 45, so I could flip it at this end and get them just fine. But let's give it a shot. So this, this consists of a piece of MDF, and then I have a half inch piece of plywood that's really dead square. And I'm, I glued to that a piece of oak here that's nicely quarter sawn. So I knew that was gonna stay flat, true, and stable. That's my fence. Then when I want a 45, I just screw that wedge down to the top and it gives me a second fence here. So for the 45, I'll just come in and I just want to push my sock just slightly beyond the end of the material. And I'm using, this is actually a miter plane, probably the ugliest plane I have, but it's amazing for this. It's really a, a beefy. I can hear you, don't talk that way. <laughs> it's a beefy low angle block plane. Uh, it was by Lee Nielsen, they don't make these anymore, but it's a, it's a beauty. Uh, really, don't think you have to run out and get one. Uh, you can do this with a lot of other planes. Virtually all planes are 90 degrees to the edge and you can set it up here and then just, I'm just shooting and I'm getting some shavings. See those sweet little shavings? Those are end grain. So instead of that table saw cut, I've got this beautiful finished cut now. So if I take my line, let's go to the other side. This jig is amphibious. So we're gonna set it right here. <laughs> I'm glad you're amusing yourself. <laughs> it's all, Your dad jokes. It's all for me. My dad jokes, yeah. They get worse every day. All right. All right, so check it out. Nice, I saw a nice shaving go off there. That should be good. Let's check, let's try it right up here. So now instead of what we had at the table saw, 
Look at the quality of that scene. You see how it's nearly invisible? That's after shooting it on the shooting board. Now, let me zip this off and show you really the standard 90 degree. So this is, I just keep this off to the side. I'm not using it. And I don't know if I, that's the one I cut. Yeah, that looks like the one I cut table saw. So then you can, this is a dead 90 here. So this is how it's usually set up. I just leave it usually for a 90. So if you need a beautiful 90 degree end, boom, there you got it. We could set that on the square. It's just perfect. No light through there at all. Really quick. Now, the way this works is when you're running this, your plane at first is going to skin into your fence a little bit. But do you see how that blade does not go all the way to the edge? It's about a quarter inch shy of the edge, as most planes are. There are some that have the blade go all the way to the edge, but this one is a quarter inch shy. So you're never going to be planing down there. So that's just what, that's the edge that's actually riding against your surface here that creates the guide for cutting a dead square. Okay, so once I feel it's no longer cutting, I know I'm truly in plane with it and I've got a beautiful 90 degree angle. So this is an awesome jig when you need that super precision and polished square end for that type of joint. Now there's lots of other jigs. I'd love to hear in, your, in the comments some of your favorites, yeah. um, what you use, uh, which ones and why, and how you like this content as well. Remember, if you do enjoy this content, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. We'd love to have you there, but especially head on over to epicwoodworking.com and check out what we got going on there, especially the neighborhood. You might want to move into the neighborhood if you want to join a community of woodworkers who are really pursuing epic woodworking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, hey, thank you once again for being part of our little shindig here. We sure enjoyed the night and I love sharing our lives and as well as this craft yes. with you each week. So on behalf of the camera lady and myself, look forward to seeing you next time right back here on Shop Night Live. Good night, everybody. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.